Garrett, we're going to start up in the Pacific Northwest. Washington obviously made a, a tremendous run to the College Football National Championship. They had to go through our first offseason winner to do so. Yeah, I mean, look, o Oregon is in as good of a position as you could possibly be in right now, I think. I mean, it's in terms of not being Ohio State, right, not having everything just completely land in your lap. But outside of Ohio State, if you're going to pick someone else, you think, hey, this team might end up in a really good spot. This has got to be Oregon, right? You look at Oregon going into the offseason, and you would expect to step back, right? They're going to a tougher conference. They're, they're going to be playing in the Big Ten. That's going to be tougher than playing in the Pac-12. So there's more good teams in that conference. It's going to be hard to find your way to the top. You're losing Bo Nix. He's going to go be one of the top, you know, probably, what, five or six quarterbacks taken at worst, um, and, and he's going to go and have a lot of success. He was great for you at Oregon. Um, you're, you're losing Bucky Irving. You're losing lots of talent up and down that roster. And so you're probably thinking, okay, well, you know, time to step back. And, you know, there is some rumors, at least going into the off season that you might lose your coach and, and he might be going off to a couple different locations. And then you look up kind of here in, you know, early March and you say, wait a minute, <laughs> how did they get better? There's no way that they actually got better. You pick up Dylan Gabriel, you pick up Dante Moore, two big time quarterbacks. Obviously, they can come in and, and compete and push each other um, to, you know, succeed in, in the immediate short term. Obviously, Dante Moore, lots of talent. Hadn't really showed it at UCLA, but um, that might be more of a function at UCLA than it is Dante Moore. Um, you know, they, they bring in the third ranked recruiting class, according to 24-7. You, you lose Troy Franklin, but you bring in Evan Stewart. That might be better. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to go completely in on that. I'm just saying Evan Stewart has all the talent in the world. It didn't pan out at Texas A&M because he was in a pretty atrocious offensive system. But at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's, it, it's a even move in my mind to bring in really, really top end talent. And then of course, a couple other guys highlighted here, Jabbar Muhammad, Brandon Johnson, Kobe Savage, all coming in to boost this team. This, this should be a really good team. Uh, and in terms of just off season, not thinking too much about next year, projecting into next season, not looking ahead at the schedule or anything, th this is as good of an off season as I can think most teams could expect. You keep your staff mostly intact. You're, you're making a, a shift upwards in conference, though it's going to be difficult. You look around at some of those other powers in that conference, and a lot of them did take a step back. And so I think looking at kind of how the off season panned out and sort of all the different pieces got put together. Oregon ends up on the top. I think you can expect to see them in the Big Ten championship game. Uh, That's what I'm expecting right now. And if you look at the S&P Plus, just to project forward just a little bit, they're ranked third in the S&P Plus, which is a lot of based on returning production. When I saw that, I was thinking to myself, that aren't they losing all their returning production? Aren't they losing their whole passing game, receiving game, running game? And then, oh, yeah, they plugged all those holes with proven power five guys, which is mm -hmm. just more than you could ask for. So the Ducks stock way, way up. And, yeah, I'm projecting them as of right now in early March to be in that Big Ten championship game. Grass is plenty green in Eugene, guys. I mean, Dan Lanning said it best himself in that little hype video. I, I look at the defense. What, what was the one thing that held them back last year, especially when they played Washington? is the inability to stop the pass. And this year they go out and they address that through the transfer portal. They get one of the best cover corners in the country in Jabbar Muhammad, who actually spurns Texas. Uh, cousins with, with Manny Muhammad down on the 40 acres, a local product in the Lone Star State. He decides to stay up in the Pacific Northwest. Um, Brandon Johnson, a, an underrated safety. And then Kobe Savage, um, who also had offers from all over when he left Kansas State, decides to go up to Oregon. So that defense... Certainly seems like they take a step forward, and uh, and I agree. I think in totality, you look at where this team is compared to a lot of other teams on their schedule, what they did in the high school ranks as well. It's really hard not to be bullish on on Oregon and the Ducks heading into their first year uh, in in the Big Ten. Yeah, I, spot on. I don't think there's anything else to add on the Ducks, man. They are going to be gunning for the conference championship in year one. I think that's more than you could ask for. I will say looking at the schedule just for a second, I pulled it up. They have three tough games. In my opinion, they have Ohio state, Michigan, and Washington. They only go to Michigan. They get the other two at home. So those are kind of your big games that you have to look at. Uh, if you're looking at Oregon, I, I mean, I like those odds. If I'm, if I'm Oregon. Gracious. Yeah. How about 